Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here. And let's play some Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, shall we? Alright, well, look at us. We're making actual progress here on this first part of the solo mode and learning more about the game, but that couldn't be happening without the help of all my Yu-Gi-Oh! friends in the comments on the YouTube videos. I want to again just say thank you so much to all of you. I appreciate greatly the detailed commentary you're giving. You guys helped me understand how I could have overcome the loss that I had earlier. You're helping me with every single aspect of this game and it's tremendous. So we're going to get into another practice to learn hopefully more about uh, another one of our extra deck types and then do a duel so let's go so this first practice is what this is pendulum summon and you guys have mentioned pendulum summon which is a method of summoning multiple pendulum monsters at the same time and i don't know much about them i don't know if i've even seen them i think somehow that you guys were saying that pendulums can go in both your normal deck or and your extra deck but i could be wrong about that let's just test it out let's see what's going on here okay what are pendulum summons this summoning method allows you to use special summon mods uh allows you to special summon multiple monsters at once oh and they have these like little uh icons i guess pendulum icons on the left and the right that are blue and red pendulum monsters are marked with special numbers called the pendulum scale which is important for pendulum summoning they also have pendulum effects that can be used when they are being treated as spell cards oh goodness okay try print pendulum summoning for yourself during your main phase, activate two pendulum monsters from your hand. Okay, so this does say from your hand, which definitely means that these are not extra deck. At least these ones aren't, because they're coming from my hand. By placing one in the leftmost spell and trap zone, and the other in the rightmost zone. Huh. Then you can special summon as many monsters as you want from your hand, as long as their levels fall between the numbers noted on the pendulum scales, not inclusive. Whoa, how wild is that? So you could theoretically just dump your hand. Pendulum summons differ from other special summoning methods like synchro summons in the way that you can only perform them once per turn. Wow. So these seem really powerful, but maybe hard to set up. Try pendulum summon. Okay. So they're going to let me go right away on my turn. And so they, they passed, and now it's my turn. I'm drawing a card, and this is a pendulum card. Okay. Um, it does have a different color on the card. It, it fades from this kind of yellow to a blue. And maybe that's just a pendulum card. All right. Activate a pendulum summon as a spell card. Okay. So... Either one of these I can activate as a spell card. So I will put it... Um, let me see what it says. The range is 1 to 1 and 8 to 8. So let's just go ahead and then... Um, put this... Uh, here? Is that where they want me to put it? In the trap slot? Am I putting that in the right place? Also try activating a pendulum monster as a spell card. Okay. All right, uh-huh, okay, and I put them there. Two pendulum monsters are on the left and right ends of your trap and spell card zone, okay. Try a pendulum summon, all right. So now I just click what, pendulum summon? And then it zaps between the two and it says select monsters to summon um, zero or one to two. So I'm gonna select one and two. And these are both seven, which are both between one and eight so I just say go for it and this amazing screen happens and then we just say face up attack position one here and face up attack position and we're just gonna one like OTK these the poor president's pendulum 
please attack with a monster. No, why not both of them? All right. Bam. How about that? Not bad at all, if you ask me. Not bad at all. All right, so we win. Victory is pretty good. And we've completed this. And let's see. Uh, we get 600 fantastic gems. And I'll just say, that's great. Okay. Now, it is time for another duel. This one says, activating card effects in response to other card effects is called a chain. Chains allow you to interfere when your opponent uses an effect. Destruction Jammer, earned in the previous chapter, can nullify any effect that destroys your monsters. Okay, so then let's go ahead and edit the deck and add the card. I really wish they would just automatically add these, but I get it. Okay, so it's called... Uh, Destruction Jammer? Yeah, add, add these. Um, one, two, three. Put it in there. Fantastic. So now I actually have the cards they're talking about in the deck. We'll save it. And we're going to go back. And uh, for, for re a clear reward, we get... What is this? Field parts. Trap hole. Field parts inspired by a trap hole. Would setting a trap like this be a mark of cunning wit or just plain unfair? I don't even know what that means, but okay. Um, all right, so we're going to learn about chains. Um, I'm going first. You guys were talking to me in the comments about chains, and um, I sort of get them, but sort of don't, so I really want some practice, and I'm ha happy to get it. What are chains? A chain is created when you activate the effect of a card in response to the activation of another card effect. So I'm most familiar with this with spells and traps. Uh, for example, there are many counter trap cards that you can activate and chain onto a card activation or effect in order to negate it. A list of the cards that you can chain will be displayed when it is possible for you to chain a card. Then you can choose whether or not you want to chain a card. Alright, so at least the interface will notify you. Okay, so my turn, right? And um, I probably want to... Uh, go ahead and do this. And we're going to get... Uh, maybe we get this. I mean... Yeah, these are always good. Because I can... You know, you have a chance of just scoring something awesome. Okay, I will return um, the uh, zombie right now. Yeah. And then look, we get a zombie. How's that? Um, I'll just put it there for now. And then I'm going to hide. I'll set this. And then we'll set this. And then I will be done. Now my Blade Knight will be pumped up next turn, I believe. Oh, double cost on. All right, so... Oh, well, that's a shame. This card can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a dark monster. Ooh, interesting. All right. It's a pretty strong card. It's got, like, a huge attack and defense and has a special effect as well not bad all right your opponent is about to end his or her turn activate the effect of a card yeah so we could activate this which would target one of their traps and destroy it so let's do this we'll start a chain i guess and i'm just going to go ahead and hit that there is no applicable card in your hand um, okay oh what did that do this card, one card, then target one card on the field, destroy it. And then um, I, draw th I draw this card, that's fine. Let me go back though, I want to see uh, the order. What happened here with Dust Tornado? 
Oh, so you get to, after you do this, you can set a trap from your hand. Interesting. Um, so that's even more combo wombo I don't really have. Uh, much to say about that, but I'm going to just do this on this. Kill their guy. And then I'm going to summon a blade knight right there. And then I'm going to go to battle. I'm going to attack with this guy first. I don't know what's going on with that trap or whatever that they have set. Okay. Alright, fine. I'm going to hide this. And I'm going to say, done. Oh, it's a jar of greed. Okay, cool. So they're just drawing the card. Alright, they've set another kind of trap down there. Scary. Alright, Leotar. Okay. Well, we can easily pump up our... Bleed Knight by summoning that. And then we could, if we wanted... Uh, we could special summon any of these. Which is pretty sweet. I love this guy. Uh... Just very strong card. This is also actually insanely strong. It has no defense, but uh, 2,600 attack ain't no joke. So what I'm going to do is just attack with everything and then summon that. Well, do I really want to do that, though? Yeah, I might as well. Let's try it. Um, but then it's like, the consequence of doing it, of special summoning, would be that uh, if they had, if this was a destroy one of my guy's card, and I summoned out something that took three, uh, I would be in bad shape, you know, in the sense that uh, I would only, I wouldn't have anything left on the field. So I can kill my these two and then at least leave this guy behind um it, it's not great but it still is threatens lethal so i'm gonna i'm gonna play it safe i don't know if this is smart at all but i'm just gonna go ahead and do that and i'll put it uh i don't know if it really matters where i put it i mean i'm sure it does i just don't understand enough yet i'll put it here um just because it's closer. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and end the turn. No! Oh, never mind. How about that? It wouldn't have mattered if I kept everything. They had to destroy all cards in the field card. Well, well. Um, oh, look at this, though. Wait a minute. Oh, well, we win anyway. Summon. Set. Summon. Fantastic. So what we can do here is just go into the um, battle phase and just attack, and it's over. So we win, just like that. You know, it it didn't even matter. We didn't learn anything about chains there, uh, but they tried to explain it to us. So, they covered some chain stuff for us. Uh, now we got this, which I don't know if that's just a cosmetic item or what that is. Anywho, uh, let's go ahead and... and uh, that didn't take very long. Let's do some more practice. Uh, this says, here we'll use Link Summon, a way to summon Link monsters from the extra deck. Okay, cool. So now they're going to teach us about Link Summon. And this should hopefully deal with most of the extra summon. We've done Synchro. We've done Link. We've done Pendulum. What are Link Summons? This summoning method allows you to bring out Link monsters. To summon a Link monster, you will need the number of materials equal to the amount of Link arrows it has, which is also equal to its Link rating. So these Link arrows tell you how many monsters you need to summon it. 
They will also gain a range of effects depending on what zones their link arrows point to or what cards are in those zones. So, I mean, I guess the positioning does matter with link guys. Try link summoning for yourself. During your main phase, send the face-up monsters on your field that you want to use as link materials to your graveyard. Then, you can summon a link monsters whose conditions have been met from your extra deck into the extra monster zone. Normally, one monster will count as one link material, but for link monsters, their link rating will denote how many materials they can be counted as. Okay, interesting. Alright, let's see what that means. Try a link summon. Okay. Alright. So, and it is my turn. I draw. I got the Link Slayer. Deal with it. Okay. Special summon Link Slayer. Alright. So Link Slayer says, if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Oh, because it's five. It's level five, which you normally wouldn't be able to. Once per turn, you can discard up to two cards, then target that many spells or traps on the field and destroy them. All right, we'll special summon this guy. Uh, he's good at attacking, so go ahead. Special summon backup secretary. Okay. Um, backup secretary says, if you control a cybers monster, which I guess, yep, Link Slayer is. You can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon backup secretary once per turn this way. Oh, okay, so we can pile on. Great. Boom. Oh, and then now we can... Two or more monsters are on your field. They are. Try a link summon. Okay. So we click here, and we say special summon, and we have this um, honeybot as a link summon. Now, the honeybot um, has link arrows on the left and the right and it says two cyber uh cyberse monsters neither player can target monsters this card points to with card effects wow and those monsters cannot be destroyed by battle so once i put this out then later the battlefield will be affected by this card interesting all right so goodbye and goodbye link link do it and then select a position oh it has to go up here i guess okay Honeybot. Special summon Link Infra Flyer. What? This kite thing? What is it? It's like a special kite. You can special summon this card from your hand to your zone a Link Monster points to. Oh, nice. It's 1800 defense. You can only summon this once per turn. Wow. All right. So um, I guess I want... It says to a zone it points to, but I don't know how left or right really is pointing to any zone besides this zone. But maybe they mean, like, left or right of it. Not below it, but left or right of it. So I'll just try over here, for example, and see if it gets that effect. Link 2 enables usage of two Link materials. Okay. Summon a Link 3 monster. What? What is happening? I'm still going? Summon a Link 3 monster. Okay. So this is a Link 3 monster. So it says two plus effect monsters. All right. Um, I can now summon this thing, which is gains 500 attack for each monster it points to. Wow, nice. When your opponent activates a card or effect, that targets a card you control. Quick effect. You contribute one monster this card points to, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Touche. All right. Um, so we, this counts as two links. And this counts as one. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then now we'll put Decode Talker up here. Okay. Link summon successful. Please attack with a monster. Oh, still my turn. Wow. Another one turn kill. Battle. Do it. We win. Take that. Opponent's life points reduced to zero. Eat my dust, Link Knight. All right. All right, so now we got 600 more gems. And here is our goal. 
So, what is this? We get a mate Sangan times one earned. I don't, it's this kind of stuff, I don't know what it means. Is this just another avatar I can use? Alright. And, oh, we just complete it automatically because we're cool. A diminutive three eyed devil. It has weathered great travails in the demon world, the underworld, and this world. Okay. Whatever that means. Gate clear. Alright, fantastic. So we finished the gate. Now, at this point, um, we've now finished the tutorial and dual strategy, and we're ready to move on to Absolute Monarch and the Warriors of the Six Elemental Lords. However, before I do that, I do want to say I have, um, I completed some missions, so let's look at what that means. Let's claim those rewards. All right, so we got something there. Um, and then we got some unlimited missions that we did, and we got some rewards, which are gems, uh, and crafting things. Okay, so from this point, um, we now have 8,800 gems. So I can go into the shop, for example. Bonus pack. Um, this is like a legacy pack. Uh, and then there's normal packs. Let's see if there's anything left in special. There's the dual pass, which I could buy. And I'll buy that at some point, but I'm not really fighting people in dual yet, so I'm not super excited to jump into that these are cosmetics um and then these are the structure decks now i am going to buy um these structure decks and i'm going to go back and i'm going to buy this one as well and the reason i'm doing this uh is just to give myself um a baseline for a bunch of cards like I feel like you know this will have a whole bunch of cards in it and it will just give me a deck to try out that is pre-built for myself and if I want to buy this deck m multiple times I can easily do that I have the gems um, but I don't know if these rotate or what and I don't want to buy um, any packs yet because I, I hear that you're supposed to buy 10 packs and that there isn't too much splashability in this game. So I really need to commit to an archetype before I do that. And so I'm going to try these um, structured decks, including the starter deck, and just kind of see what I like and maybe go from there with my gems. I'm going to save them up. I don't want to, you know, just willy-nilly spend them if I don't have to. Um, and so... I'm excited that we finished the first part of this. I still have a lot of questions. The link summon arrows are confusing to me. Um, and chains still are confusing to me. But I guess the more I play, things will be uncovered. And the more you guys give me comments that help, and the more I'm able to digest those, uh, I will get better as well. Everyone, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. I will check you guys next time. Take care.